Hello. One of the intraoperative difficulties in eye muscle surgery is the occasional talking of the surgical field with blood that sometimes might be very annoying. However, you can overcome this difficulty with a good surgical planning and a proper surgical technique. You will need to consider few things about general anesthesia. The first is the depth of anesthesia. Deep anesthesia will ensure good hemostasis during surgery by lowering the blood pressure of the patient. However, some anesthesia doctors don't like the patient getting very deep under anesthesia because it disturbs the hemodynamics of the patient. So if you feel that the tissues are congested and the patient is bleeding more than usual, ask your anesthesia doctor to put the patient deeper under anesthesia. The second thing is whether the inhalational anesthesia is administered using a laryngeal mask or an endotracheal tube. The use of endotracheal tube might induce more strain during induction and during recovery from anesthesia and might increase the blood pressure of your patient initially, especially in adult patients. On the other hand, a laryngeal mask is smoother with less strain and less tissue congestion. However, it is not always a safe choice, particularly in younger children. It is also slightly more expensive. Finally, you need to understand whether the patient is taking muscle relaxants or not. Children are usually put to sleep using spontaneous anesthesia with no muscle relaxants. Adults, on the other hand, usually need controlled anesthesia, which requires the patient to receive muscle relaxants. Muscle relaxants, however, might prolong recovery from surgery and might not be preferred if you want to do a forced induction test before surgery. However, they reduce the blood pressure of the patient and reduce the tissue congestion. You need to ensure proper head position before surgery, especially in obese patients. The shoulders and the head should be lifted by placing a sandbag or a roll under the shoulders of the patient. This greatly helps to reduce the tissue congestion and improve exposure of the surgical field. But remember that when you lift the head, you also have to extend the neck slightly so that the chin is slightly higher than the forehead as this helps to improve the surgical exposure. One thing that can help to minimize the bleeding is the use of topical decongestants before surgery, the most known of which is phenylephrine eye drops. Another alternative is to use diluted adrenaline drops or alpha-2 adrenergic agonists like brimonidine. However, remember that alpha-2 agonists should not be used in children because of systemic side effects. You always need to avoid sources of bleeding. Always try to avoid hitting the major conjunctival or ciliary blood vessels. So, when opening the conjunctiva, you can see that there is a pink zone overlying the muscles and a white zone in between. The incision should be made in the white, not the pink zone. Another source of bleeding is the muscular arteries. Vessels might be accidentally cut during excision of the intermuscular septa so you have to observe them clearly while doing this dissection.
you should always try to avoid hitting the blood vessels by going deeper to them in partial thickness sutures. And going around the vessels in full thickness sutures. Bleeding may also occur after muscle disinsertion due to cutting of the muscular arteries during muscle disinsertion. The bleeding is usually minimal and can be easily controlled with gentle compression with a sponge. Alternatively, you can do a light diathermy anterior to the muscle insertion either before or after muscle disinsertion. Bleeding is much more during resection because the muscle fibers themselves are cut. The bleeding can be controlled by clamping of the muscle before cutting it. This helps to compress the muscle fibers and minimize the muscle bleeding. And you can also apply diathermy to the cut ends of the muscle to minimize the bleeding. Thank you.